implementing ACID just by itself is already a challenging problem, but now factoring in distributed systems, it makes it even more so. So here's a few of the problems and some of the ways that I've seen uh, them dealt with to not necessarily solve them, but to at least mitigate them. So the first one is, is a class of problems called split brain. And this is basically means network problems. So if there's a, uh, you have crashes and, um, uh, cons you know, crashes and consensus type of thing. So what happens if one uh, or more of the other machines on the cluster crashes? Well, the consensus requirements, right? So I'm, as I mentioned, durability, what's the acceptable number of nodes, what they're called in the cluster, uh, for the operations and replicas to be persisted to? Is one good enough? Is two? Is the majority? Is memory good enough? Do I need to have disk? Second one is uncommitted transactions leave behind artifacts. So uh, in, in a read committed system, we should never see the dirty reads. But if a, if a transaction fails right in the middle, it's going to leave some extra stuff around uh, that we can't necessarily view unless we, you know, flip some flags and, and, and go looking for it. But most processes can't view, but we got to clean those up at some point. Otherwise, they're just going to, you know, keep taking up space. And so uh, there's a couple of methods to deal with this. One is called the cooperative model. I want to show you this one today. This is a, a cooperative model applies when you're dealing with a client side implementation of transactions and something like, um, uh, Paxos, which I'm not going to go into, but it's a, it's an algorithm or a system, uh, or something like zookeeper can just sort of act as a, uh, a controller on the server side now to say, okay, uh, I'm give me the transaction. I'll take care of it. Um, and I'll, I'll coordinate among all these different, uh, different pieces of the cluster and edge cases. And this is, you know, this is one that always bites us as developers, no matter what we're working on, but you know, there's edge cases to a transaction and split brain introduces even more edge cases. So network goes down, um, network goes down temporarily, network goes down at uh, n equals one, n equals two, and n equals three, or sorry, t equals one, t equals two, t equals three, et cetera. Uh, all those things could be different. So how do we deal with all those? And this is true from relational databases, and it's even more true of a distributed system introducing the network. Uh, so the way to deal with this is just mitigate that. Try to identify the edge cases, test for them, plan for them, expect them, and uh, and deal with them. Or the alternative is might say, well, that's a one in a billion or that's a one in a trillion uh, thing that could happen. So the juice isn't worth the squeeze, as they say. Uh, so we'll just, we'll just document that and say, eh, it could happen, but it's one in a trillion. Latency is another issue. And this is performance, basically. We, we don't want to just go ahead and reinvent a relational database with the same performance constraints as relational because we're just reinventing something that already exists. And so the, the challenge here is, the solution here is really educational. Uh, and so ACID, distributed ACID transactions are always going to have overhead, uh, potentially a lot of overhead. Hopefully it's you know getting improved and getting reduced with every new version, but it's always going to be overhead there. And uh, so only apply a transaction when it's necessary is basically the solution there. And then we need to understand how does an ACID transaction affect performance and how does it affect high availability? And I'll have some links for you later to kind of wrap your head around, okay, with transactions, it'll, you can run this many operations. Without transactions, you can run this many operations. And, and again, basically, we're going to solve with data modeling to reduce the transactions that we need uh, but but use a transaction when we have to. So then correctness is uh, is also what we're talking about. This kind of goes back to the edge cases. So once we've got an asset transaction in place, how do we know for sure that it's going to be sufficient? Um, have you ever written threaded code and tried to test it? Try to write a unit test for it? Uh, I mean, even simple threaded code, writing a unit test, you're going to have to worry about uh, race conditions. And it's just not, it's not easy. It's not straightforward. And now add the network into that. <laughs> and imagine all the problems that network's going to introduce into the equation as well. Uh, and so how do we, how do we verify those edge cases that we even know, we're even aware of the edge case in the first place? Um, so one method is we can, uh, we can go to Jepson and we can say, hey, uh, let's look at the Jepson guidelines 
or maybe let's even hire Jepson uh, to verify this for us, to go through their testing, which is, you know, is a good thing to do, but they might not even catch all the edge cases, right? And this is expensive to do, especially if you want to, okay, we fix this, let's re-verify it. Well, then we got to go the whole thing again. And you might even find yourself in this situation here. And I'm, I'm not trying to diminish a competitor here. I just want to show you that, I mean, the most popular NoSQL database in the world has even struggled to get, go through those Jepson guidelines and um, you know, get on the same page with them. So it's challenging work and it's not a completely solved problem. It may not ever be. I wanna talk about the trade-offs here because I mentioned this earlier, client side and server side approach. These are two different approaches you can take. Uh, let your clients, let your application uh, handle the transaction or let your database server handle the transaction. And these are, uh, for the most part, so most SQL databases that I've seen so far are taking the server side approach and Couchbase is taking the client side approach. So I want to compare and contrast because again, there's, there's not a right or wrong way to do it. They're, they're both approaches that have pros and cons. So with the server side, the pro is here that our SDKs, you know, we make a .NET library available, we make a Java library available for our database. Uh, we don't have to change those very much to add a transaction here. It's basically just adding some, uh, some more methods like start transaction, commit transaction, rollback transaction. And those are just relaying those commands to the server. I don't want to dis diminish this because it is, it is still hard work to build an SDK and make changes and document it uh, and so on. But the actual transaction implementation doesn't live in the client. The server is taking care of all of this. And so therefore the cons are that the server or the servers, the server side has to do a lot of extra work. So things like a global coordinator, a global lock manager, and a global scheduler, um, something to synchronize clocks. So we make sure we're getting things done in the right order. And so this can be somewhat fragile and it requires some additional configuration and maybe even has strict requirements about your servers. Like your servers have to you know, match these specifications in order to support a transaction. So it's a lot of work on the server side uh, to do that. Um, the, the pros of so the client side is basically kind of the reverse of that, the flip side. So we don't have to implement those global things to the server side, to all the cluster. It's just going to be regular operational traffic as far as the server is concerned. Now, there are some features that we may need to build on the server side. So I mentioned durability requirements, staging capabilities. You're going to see some of that here in the demo. But none of the transaction logic lives on the server. So this makes, actually makes it quick to iterate uh, to an extent because we don't have to wait on the server team to actually make the change and deploy it to the next version. We can just update the SDK, for instance. Uh, and so there's nothing uh, new to configure on the server. Again, it's just uh, regular traffic as far as the server is concerned. Now the cons here is that uh, one, we have to now make major SDK changes. Uh, and this is actually why my demo today is going to be in Java. It's not because I love Java. Uh, it's just because it's not yet ready in other languages yet. So all clients that use transactions must be on the same page. They must follow the same algorithm. Um, this makes it a little harder for the community, unfortunately, to follow this approach. And let me give you an example of that. So let's say there's uh, someone out there who wanted to build a Couchbase uh, application uh, a Fortran application that uses Couchbase. So first of all, there, Couchbase does not have an official Fortran SDK. So right off the bat, you actually have to build that, um, uh, which is a challenge in and of itself, but it's totally possible. People have built community SDKs. So for instance, uh, ColdFusion, which you may think, oh, ha, ColdFusion, people still use that? Yes, they still do. And uh, Couchbase doesn't really have the resources to hire a ColdFusion team, so the cold fusion community stepped up and created a Couchbase SDK, right? But now let's say that Fortran uh, client, you want to build, you want to uh, do transactions, or the or the cold fusion client. Well, you have to learn about the same algorithm that the Java client, the .NET client's using, or you know wrap it in a pro you know, proxy something else, right? So Couchbase Incorporated will do a lot of this work, right? Building the Java SDK that I'm using today eventually deploying it to the C and the .NET SDK and so on. But it is a heavier lift to do this on the client side. 
Okay, speaking of the demo, I've talked about that uh, a lot and uh, I'm actually going to get to it now.